Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Woohoo to Create Talks. I have one of my dear friends, which, you know, we were talking about just the I'm leaving the house sale, etc. And going, we don't want to ever go away from each other. We love each other so much. Rose is involved with our Art on stage in one of our campuses here at Bethel and has been a dear friend for the last five years. Oh my gosh, the things that we have done, Rose and I could tell you. With Amazing. Schools of, I know, schools of creativity, raising up artisans around the planet, uh, just seeing so many creative like things happening in, in our midst. And it's such an honor that you're here. So welcome, oh, man. it's an honor to be here. I love you, Teresa. I love what God has been doing in our midst. It's just been so crazy good. It has been. It's been like one of those things that I, I look back and I go, did we just do that? And then did we just do that? And what? And and even through COVID, we did a, I did a, a school of creativity and we still saw so many people get rocked and touched and we're now back in full swing with Arts on Stage in Bethel right now as things are reemerging, which is so fun to watch. And Francesco now is in place, uh, which he started uh, September 1st. So there's so many wonderful things happening. And I get to move to SoCal and then I get to, we get to encourage each other. But, but today we're talking about an icon, an icon person who I believe can change your life. It, it's Simon Bull. And you can look at his art on bullart.com. Look at his galleries. He's got one in Carmel, one in St. Helena, which is in the Napa area. So mid California area started in the UK and God spoke to him about moving here. He, he worked a lot with Thomas Kincaid as well, but he is this thriving artist. I mean, Barack Obama's portrait hanging in the White House was done by Simon Bull, uh, Muhammad Ali, who we're celebrating right now. Uh, he, this boxer, he he did all of his promotional uh, portraits as well. And I mean, the Cherry Blossom, all that festival, he does that in DC. There's, there's like, everywhere you look, you see Simon. And it's so crazy because he's gonna be with us October the 23rd, nine to five, both online and in person. Um, I'm going to have Karen put that in our wonderful Facebook group and let you know you need to come. You can go to TeresaDebman.com, check it out there as well, or you can register through the Eventbrite, but it's going to be spectacular. Nine to five, who gets that in his warehouse? I mean, Rose, we're actually going to be <laughs> walking around his warehouse where he does all of his art, where he houses all of his art, where he has all of his art supplies. He's going to give us demos, etc. but but we want to introduce you to a story about how we first met Simon Bull. And Rose, I want you to share about that because that was crazy. Well, okay. So first off, I have to admit, I, I had no clue whatsoever who Simon Bull was. I didn't have like a, a modern day favorite artist aside from Teresa Deadman. You know, I, I was just like, okay, just kind of, I love art and I love beauty. I love color, but I just wasn't that in the know and sorry Papa Simon <laughs> I didn't know who you were from Adam back then but in hindsight I'm so glad I didn't know because God got to blast me and and our group with the presence of God through Simon's artwork and so we were traveling to Monterey California on a ministry tour with Teresa and it's Friday night and and we hear that there's this artist out in Monterey that um, he's going to pop in on, on Sunday at Sunday service because he wants to meet Teresa and the team. He's heard of, you know, the creative arts. And so we're like, okay, that's cool. And, and all of a sudden, you know, we're excited, but this is just, you know, we have no idea what God has in store. So I go to sleep and I have this dream and the father is behind me and he's inviting me into this garden and this garden is just like so beautiful and brilliant. The, the, the flowers are taller than like houses, Teresa. Come and the, the trees are bigger than I've ever seen. And they're, the color is like light and fluid. And I walk in, I step in and it feels like I'm in liquid. And I'm like, what is going on father? And he's just infusing me with all this love and purpose and joy all in the same time. 
and it was like an electric surge. And then all of a sudden I'm awake because I'm getting a text from Teresa Dedman at 4.30 in the morning because oh, she's, she's up having an encounter with God herself. And he's telling her, hey, there's this strategy. You're going to do this collaboration, this painting with your artists on one canvas. So I'm getting blasted in my dreams. I'm getting blasted by God in my waking moment. Like, what is happening? God, you're on the move. So we're going to the, the next day. We decide we're going to go see this guy's like gallery, right? You know, we're going to drop by and we park. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be a little shop in Carmel. Well, this gallery is like the whole corner and it's a beautiful brick building. And, and as soon as we walk in, the presence of God just like starts downloading on us. And we're looking at each other like, we are in the right place at the right time. We got hit with the Kairos moment, divine moment of God. And we're like, yes. And the further we go in, the further we feel the power of God come on us. And so I turn this corner, I'm looking at the art, so beautiful. And I'm literally inches away face to face with the dream that I had the night before. I'm almost walking into this huge painting of brilliant colors and flowers. And it was incredible. And God just encountered me right there. I felt like I was in an elevator, Teresa. My stomach had those kingdom butterflies start going. And I was like, God, what are you doing? And he's imparting to me, you're at the right place at the right time. Your yes oh, yeah. empowers yeah. so much. It opens up doors. When I said yes to Teresa's invitation, I had no idea what God was going to do through Simon, through that little trip to what I thought was going to be a little shop. Oh my <laughs> God, Teresa, we encountered God. He oh, encountered us. <laughs> we, we totally did. I mean, part of it, part of the story is like we had a team of, I don't know, about 12 people from our BSSM uh, students coming down to join me that I had raised up. But we had four or five of my artist team that were arts on stage with like Lynn and Rowena, myself and Rose that had a day off. And so literally none of us knew who Simon Bull was. We were so, I think, infiltrated in the church. We didn't really like have time to go. I didn't have time to really go out. And so my my the girl uh, keith and susan shot who invited me from tree of life uh they said you know what there's this guy named simon bull and you should go down there and see his art and so we had no literally we had no idea what rose talked about is so true when we went into this gallery we were hit by the presence of god through his colors through the things that he designed i mean it is unbelievable it's it's like something out of a, it's like a wonderland. It, you feel like you're in a wonderland. That's the only way to describe it. And so we all were like hit. I mean, we were experiencing an encounter in God. We were all like, remember we were all on the couch downstairs, just completely drunk in the presence of God, just completely getting filled up. It was so crazy. Um, and if you have any questions too about Simon Bull or about Rose's story, please put those questions in because we love, love, love to answer them. But guys, like, isn't that what we all want? We want to do something creative that can bring the presence of God into anyone. And people just walk by there and they come in there and they hit, they hear the presence and they feel the presence of God. And guys, that's what we're called to be. This is about a creative talk where we get to share with you the story of what can happen through what we create. And we were able to meet Simon that Sunday. He came where I was speaking. We all painted together and he goes, well, that's really cool. I hadn't thought about that. And he got inspired. And then we found out that we, I asked him a question. I said, cause I didn't know his background in what his Christian faith was. I said, so what inspires you? And he said, listening to Bill Johnson, I go, oh, all bets are off. Okay, uh, so I prayed for him prophesied over him and then i was able to have him come to my school of creativity that year which was about a um, month and a half um before we we started and he just blew it up he painted with paper towels on the stage so <laughs> a, a lot of you don't understand that simon has a wealthy background and he's going to be 
giving you demos on how he creates with um, spinning art, how he creates in, and then you have time to actually do it as well. And again, any level, anybody can come, but in that process, uh, I fell in love with Simon Bull that he would give his time to come up to Little Reading. Reading is a smaller community and just pour out his heart to other creatives. And I think that Rose at that point, I realized this is a lifelong connection. This is something that we'll continue to have. So we've been, we've been good friends now for the last four years and Simon, it, he's going to, he's going to rock your life. So either online or in person, you need to go, you need to, if, if you have any heart to be a creative who wants to transform culture in the art world, whatever level of experience you're going to grow, you're going to get impartation from me and from him, but either online or in person, this will radically change the way that you think about art and the influence of art. And he's, he's the real deal. Like I, I can't even begin. I mean, Rose is shaking her head because seriously, if you knew it blows him, your mind, <laughs> if you knew him, he's the most giving person I've ever seen. Yeah. But, so, you know, we were sharing like Simon, he just carries the heart of the father so well. And, you know, as, as a man, you know, in the natural and, and as a father, and you could see him as a husband and grandfather and all these things, you know, he shares his life so beautifully online and, um, and through his art, but he, he also carries this, the anointing of the father. So, you know, I shared with you a little earlier, I'm a daddy's girl. So when my father shared an encouraging word for me in whatever situation it was, I automatically felt like I could do anything. And that's a very similar experience that I have whenever I'm learning from Simon. Whenever, you know, if you hear, hear him speaking about his art, his testimonies, it's like I'm sitting with the father, sitting with my dad, you know, my heavenly father, and he's encouraging me. All of a sudden, the things that I, I thought were maybe impossible or too hard you know, with, within my creative expression, all of a sudden, those things seem possible. And so come on, guys, this is what happens when you sit with folks that are operating in their purpose, that are operating in their, their calling. There's Teresa Dedman, who's doing this in the setting of the church. And there's Simon Bull, who's doing this outside of the church, out in the marketplace. So whoever you are, if you're in between, if you don't even know, if you just appreciate art and don't think you're creative, you are, we'll get into that later, but <laughs> you're going to glean from what God is doing through this power encounter, through this power um, partnership, because Teresa, you and Simon, you're like a mama and a papa in the spirit in the creative. Yeah. And you both have been called in your unique ways to raise up creatives, to be able to operate in the power of God in any sector of the world, because we need that. We need that right now more than ever. Oh Woo, come on. We need help right now. I, I can't agree with you more. Um, somebody was asking, and this is a funny story about what paper towels. Uh, so Simon, <laughs> if you don't know Simon, you, you will get to know him on the 23rd. And by the way, everything is recorded. So if you can't even be there on the 23rd, you can like pay for the online and then we can send it to you. So that's also an option. But I have to tell you a funny story. So what happened is Simon Bull worked on cruise ships for probably about five to 10 years. And so he had to paint really fast. It was like called performance art style. So one time his brushes didn't come. So he took a paper towel, he put paint on it and then he started to swirl it on the canvas and everybody's going "Ooh, ah and he began to <laughs> he began to use that as his paintbrush and he discovered that he could cover the canvas so much more faster and he could also put it on on strategic places to make flowers to make different kinds of stuff so he'll be showing you how to do that because it is absolutely amazing and then we have another um comment for you and this is for you, Rose, about intercession. Uh, how does intercession play a role in your creative process? Oh, man. 
That's a great question. So I can even give you an example. One time, Teresa, you, you had been equipping us as a team you know, to minister at Bethel, you called us, you were going to preach on a Friday night. And he said, you're going to do the art and whatever God downloads on the canvas through you, you're going to come up and you're going to talk about it. You're going to release it. And, um, it was the first time I really did that up in front at Bethel church. And, you know, it's not a little church. So there's all this element of, you know, there's people I'm doing this in front of, we're taking a risk and you teach us to take the risk to step out and watch God meet us. So I did this painting and I paint with my hands. Um, and so I did this painting where Jesus um, was at a, at a river and he had these, pages, these files of medical diagnoses. There were permanent medical diagnoses for anxiety, depression, and fear. And he, he was laughing at them and he throws them in the river and they dissolve and turn into butterflies that fly up in the sky. And so I did my abstract rendition of that. And I'm releasing this word. And I said, God is breaking off anxiety and fear. And he's freeing you right now in Jesus name. If that's for you, put up your hand. You know, we're just like waiting because we know God is doing something and crickets, nothing. <laughs> right. And so it's like, okay, God, I'm humbled. But later you asked us to step out onto the prayer line to pray for folks at the end of the service. And I had over a dozen people come up and tell me, you know, at that moment, when you asked us to raise our hand, I was battling fear. I had a lifelong diagnosis of anxiety and fear, and I couldn't put my hand up because in that moment, I realized I had to partner my faith with the word that you released through your painting and get my healing, and I did. And so over a dozen people, this is what happens when you're interceding through your paint, you're letting your paint prophesy. There's a breakthrough there's a power of Holy Spirit breakthrough on that painting that comes forth. And so I want to encourage you, if, if you're called as an intercessor and you are also creative, don't think you're split. You get to go ahead and put those things together and see what God will do. That's amazing. I, I love yeah. it. I, I have to tell you guys, like part, part of the process of of creating is knowing again how the Holy Spirit's moving and that's through intercession. Right. So I teach right. the I teach the artists like what you do is you say, Holy Spirit, why am I creating that? What is that for? Just like what Rose was talking about. So I, I was painting alongside Simon Bull at another art and worship time. And this was at the Tree of Life Church and they were having a big celebration and so Simon's painting was on one side, I was on the other. And you talk about like uh, feeling a little bit inadequate, right? You're painting next to this world-class artist, right? No pressure. Yeah, no pressure at all, like no pressure. And when I looked over there after worship and we were, Kevin and I were, were talking and speaking, I looked over and I kept seeing eyes and he did, he did it with paper towels and it was more of just an abstract going across, like almost like a, lines like this and the lord said there's going to be healing for eyes now simon had never seen any type of healing through his art but because of intercession like what rose is talking about because i teach people to know like every time you create god is moving in some area at the end i said hey anybody have eye problems like floaters vision vision problems and about 10 people came forward and about eight people got 100% healed like the floaters uh -huh. disappeared uh the myopia the, the, there was somebody had myopia that did that disappeared some people were they couldn't see far away or close that changed but it was because of Simon and I looked at Simon and I go look at this like he had no idea the power of that and so that's where the church and the the marketplace can mingle because there's something that we both need and that's what we want to give you at the intensive, I'll be also giving impartations as well as Simon, because we're all called to be healers through what we create. We're all called to intercede, like what happened with you right. Rose, when you when you did that piece, and then people came up that had depression and had anxiety. Like, guys, this is a normal occurrence. Like, we are His vessel, and what we create is meant to change people. And 
Again, and I love the questions. Make sure that you, yeah, if you have any questions for us, let us know. But I'm gonna go ahead and talk about um, your journey as an artist and what happened when you began to build community with other artists, both in the School of Creativity and in the art community at Bethel. Um, just share some testimonies, like what, what happened and how did that change you? So Teresa, you established this really beautiful holy space for creatives to come and explore who they are as a creative, what their creative expression is and how that really works as a child of God. Like, what does that even mean? Like, I didn't grow up even with that on my radar. I just went to church and did, you know, little Sunday school prayers and, and that was it. I didn't, I didn't know any of this is, you know, even possible. So I'm coming in with these big eyes, like, what, you know, God, you're doing this. Like, I, I saw it happen before. Like, I saw you on stage doing art back in like 2004. And it inspired me. I did that at home on my, you know, in my notebook or something like that. But what am I doing here now, God, with this woman of God that has brought this space together? And there's all of these other creatives. And they're bringing all of their gifts and there's everybody at different levels, technical level, but also spiritual level. And you, Holy Spirit in you, united us to be able to do things together, to go minister out in the community, to minister love. This is just about a love encounter, really, guys. It's all a foundation of love that Teresa's built in community and that has she has fostered for us to carry on wherever we're at. I know you're going to SoCal. Oh. You know, you're, it's expanding, but, yeah. but this is, it's transformational because you get a depth of affirmation as a creative and as a, a daughter or son of God that you don't get anywhere else, but within that community of, of creatives that you, you establish. And I know you, this is multiplying. It's meant to be multiplied out in the world. And that's why you're raising us all up, right? I know. And, and again, guys, like part of my heart is like, and, and Rose knows this, like, that's why I did Create Academy, because then you can be in a creative community around the world online, and you can grow with me and my community, because I believe what Rose is talking about is so important. You really thrive and grow as you're in community. There's something that shifts and changes. Like, when you take an art class or a, or a seminar with Simon Bull and you're with a community of people that are prophesying, that are raising you up, you just go to the next level. And it's just this thing called Acts 242. When they were together and met, things just happened. It's the, yeah. it's, it's the way God has wired us. So if you've dealt with fear of sharing your art, if you've dealt with like, oh, can I really create? This is your moment. Go to Simon Bull's Art Intensive. Be involved in my Create Academy because you will. You'll grow. But Kim has a question for you. Kim is saying, I love the painting with my fingers, how you created that way. That's how I started being creative. Eyes closed. I'm um, using my fingers. Uh, and then she says here, hold on a second. Wow, just amazing, Rose. And so Rose, like that's part of your journey. And that's part of, uh, of all of our journeys. That's the journey of Simon Bull, that God, he inspires us to create with, with different types of tools, with different kinds of stuff. But we all celebrate one another. We don't have to, I don't have to like think about Rose in being competition because we're in community and we honor each other. Like she did her flowers. I did a fuchsia, a fuchsia flower right here, dipping down with these tendrils because I kept, see, I kept seeing that the Lord wants to open people up to the power of who they are through community, through the different petals above, and then they, they drip down. It's like, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take this message of hope and, and just wrap it around through what we create in any creative form. And then God just says, oh, who's that for? Oh, I think it's for this person. And I'm just the person that will help you take risks. I'm just that kind of person. I think God is oh, so yes, good. You are. <laughs> so good um, you know there's this thing that I say you know I, I share with with anybody who will listen it's like 
get around Teresa because eventually she's going to grab you by the ankle and throw you in the deep end. And it's going to be great because you did that for me. You did that for Rowena and Lynn and, you know, everybody that that's in community because you know, the goodness that happens in that tension of trusting God and taking risk. It's explosive and it's so good and it impacts the world. It, it, it really does. It's one of those beautiful things, guys, that it, it's kind of like what we're talking about. And this might help you guys to understand. It's like when you hear about a place like Disneyland and you hear, oh, it's going to be this. And, and then you go there and you go, oh, this is a lot better than what I thought. When, when you're involved in a creative catalytic community and you're with people like myself, Simon Bull, and other leaders that want to propel you. You just grow so much farther uh, and it's just one of those things where and we're going to be sharing tes testimonies we just did this art intensive together before covid with simon bull and oh my gosh the testimonies about what people did afterward we had this one girl that's in our art community now who she goes teresa after simon and you imparted i just began to, to do art every day and things were happening and i never had that before and I didn't know what, what had happened. I go, well, that's just because you got activated and the Holy Spirit um, broke, broke you of fear, broke, broke you free of fear, and those things just happened. But, um, but share some testimonies about what happened in that art intensive because people need to know. Oh, yeah. Well, so folks got to encounter the presence of, of the Father, kind of, you know, similar to what, what I was sharing before because of how, how, Simon carries himself and he just really that's like the dominant thing that he walks in naturally um, but also like with you they get the Holy Spirit too like that raw Holy Spirit this partnership I'm telling you of Teresa Deadman and Simon Bull when they come and they bring an activation for you there's the creative that happens there's the the Holy Spirit that happens folks got healed Folks got spoken over, folks got an encounter with love, like everything that you could think of that God is, like the, the facets of God, like he was present. And so if you're like hungry for what God is doing in create in the creative realm, if you feel like even that little prompt, I told you earlier, just that one moment of saying yes to Teresa's invitation to this ministry trip opened up a world of, of creativity and Holy Spirit that we had no idea. It wasn't on our grid, but now we're walking in it. We're operating it. You know me, Teresa. I wasn't doing this um, art intercession. I wasn't running after it the way I am today, but something ignited. There was a process. It wasn't overnight, but something ignited in me to understand I have a deeper purpose. Yeah. And there was the higher level of significance as a daughter of the king. And if you have any like question of your significance as a child of the king or your significance here on, on this world and what your purpose is, I just, I encourage you come, come and see what good God is going to do, what he's going to stir up in you. It's so true. It's, it's amazing. Right. I, I love it. Uh, Sue has such a great question from our, on our Facebook Live. Sue, thank you for, for joining. Sue says, how does intentionality play in maintaining relationships that God has placed in your life as a creative? So how does intentionality play in maintaining relationships that God has placed in your life as a creative? Yeah, well, you know, something that you've taught us really well and that, you know, our culture at Bethel and just the word talks about is being intentional of being in community, being intentional in all your relationships, like make every day count for the glory of God. And that's in your relationships with everyone you encounter. That's with, you know, your, your UPS person that comes and delivers your, your packages, you know, there's a smile and that's something that's anointed by God because you're a child of God. There's heaven coming forth. So as we are intentional about all the little things, all the big things start falling into place too. That's beautiful. I love it. You know, in, intentionality, what Rose is talking about, Sue, is um, what do you want to have in five and 10 years? I mean, you build 
from that intention. And so for me, I, I just didn't want people that could do great art. I, I wanted people that were in touch with the Holy Spirit, in touch with a community. And then when they saw the need, like what she's talking about with the UPS, whatever, then they can give. And to do that, Sue, I had to intentionally build a structure at Bethel where we met together weekly, where we we painted together, where, where we went out in the marketplace and we did different types of things together. And I was with all my table pastors. That means that the people that were in each table that oversaw the people at that table. And I met with them uh, an hour early before that weekly meeting. I, I was intentional because I was intentional with the School of Creativity, having Simon Bull and others come and, and having them really hear from people in the marketplace, not just in the church, that were transform transforming history. So mm -hmm. intentionality is looking at what does God really want to do and then creating an avenue for that to happen. And for me, Sue, I and for people that are listening, it's like Rose knows this about me. I, I don't see Jesus, God the Father, or Holy Spirit doing anything without relationship. I don't, I mean, it, it just doesn't happen. And so if he's in relationships with us, then we need to be in relationships with one another. And we need to not separate creativity from a spirituality, which a lot of people have done. I mean, they, they think that an artist is not spiritual when they paint. That's not true. It's just not true. It's like everything that we create in God's presence carries an anointing for healing, for transformation. But God just doesn't want us to do it alone. He wants to co-create with us, which is part of my story of writing my books and Create Academy as well. It, that's part of what we love. So, um, but thanks, that's a great question. Um, I have another question for you. Uh, do you think anyone can grow from being with Simon Bull and myself, no matter what level of ex expertise or years of training as an artist? Tell me about that because I can hear it and I know you can hear it, Rose, people going, well, I'm not qualified. Well, I'm not good enough. I've never taken Teresa's class or I've never ever taken an art class. So share about that because they need to know about what happens when people are in these in these uh, intensives and how it's for everyone but sh share your own heart there right so there's this like principle in the kingdom you get around folks that are that are on fire like you're going to catch fire <laughs> and that's a good thing right you want to catch fire and it, it doesn't matter if you can barely draw stick figures like God has made you a creative because guess what? You're a chip off the old block. He's the father. He's your father. And he was creative. Let's think back to Genesis. What did he say? In the beginning, God created. That's the first thing he does. He's introducing himself as a creator first in his, in this book about himself. I mean, that has to tell you something about who he's called you to be. So you're creative, whether you're operating in that yet or not. So come so that you could catch on fire to find out, get in deeper to find out what are you meant to do? Are you meant to be a writer? Are you meant to be, you know, are you, are you supposed to make films or videos? I have a testimony, Teresa, at the first school of creativity, um, you had these tables out, these prophetic art tables, but there was this one table, it was prophetic writing. And I had not really heard yeah. of that. I didn't know what that table was supposed to do, but you said, hey, there's a spot there. I, I need you to come and, and minister there. And you just went off and you, you like, you trusted me. And I'm like, well, if God said to, you know, to Teresa that I can do this, <laughs> I'm going to go do it. I don't know what I'm doing. There's that risk again. Yeah. Okay. Keep that in mind. There's that risk. And every single person that came up God gave me a poem that actually rhymed. I had like, I would say about 10 people come and it didn't just rhyme, but there was perfect in it. A year later, I'm in uh, BSSM, the School of Supernatural Ministry with you. We had the students come and we're talking to them. One young man comes up and says, you're Rose. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Sure. He's like, no, you gave me a word at that table. Woo! And 
it, it was a catalyst for me to be here now. You, you read my mail. God spoke to me through that poem, and now I'm here. So come on, you don't know what God's going to do, but he's going to do it. <laughs> yes, he is. That, that is so cool, Rose. I, yeah. I had that story. Wow. Are you guys having fun? I, I'm going to have Rose prophesy right now and just release her, her, an impartation to you because this is your time. Don't, do not squander this opportunity. Like get involved in Create Academy Online. Get involved in Simon Bull's Art Intensive. Find out that you have a creative tribe that can really, really touch your life. And and part of that is Rose. Rose now is impacting so many people because she got let loose, because she realized who she was. And it was so fun to watch. But she's just going to prophesy over you. And so uh, if you would love a word, Sue or Kim or anybody else that's there, she is going to unload those. So go for it. Hey, Teresa, I'm going to share this, this piece of prophetic art. It's called the invitation. And I feel it's, it's perfect for this, for today. This is it's the one that's right behind me. And right now I just release the invitation to come closer, come closer, draw near to God, find out more about who he's called you to be. Let him just bubble up inside you the hope of who you are as a creative. Let him show you the power of the Holy Spirit in you and how you've been made to, to impact the world around you. Start small, take a step forward, but accept the invitation because he's holding out his arms to you. And so I just release that over you. I say, folks, if you have that prompting of the Holy Spirit when you've heard the testimonies, when you hear the invitation to come, just act on that. Like Teresa and I shared earlier, saying yes to God is an eternal impact. It impacts our generations to come. Your sons, your daughters, your family, they benefit too. This God is not just a one-shot deal. He is eternal. And so he wants you to be part of that. And he's drawing creatives near right now. He's raising up creatives through folks like Teresa, folks like Simon, folks like Rowena and Lynn and Rose and you. Who are you influencing? He's ready to equip you in the creative to impact your sphere of influence. And if you say, I'm not influential, guess what? We're just going to laugh at that lie. You cannot not be influential because you're a daughter or son of the king. And so I release that goodness over you right now. I release an impartation to walk in who you are as a creative. Get to your next level. Holy Spirit is just pushing you in right now. It's a love push into some more goodness of heaven. And it's all for you in Jesus mighty name. Bam. <laughs> Amen. Ooh, thank it. I mean, I got hit by that painting. It's like I could feel the presence of God leading me in and the rose is like, he is the rose of sharing there. There's something about smelling the fragrance of God and knowing that heaven is just around the corner. I, I kept hearing this word rose for, for people that had been discouraged because they had had people put themselves down. They, they had had these encounters with either family members or it could have been their school or it could have been them wanting to do something. They said, oh, you can't do that. You can't draw. You can't create. You can't do that. And I feel like the Lord said, no, that was the enemy trying to steal your, your dream and your inheritance. I don't know who that is right now, but I just say it's time for you to let that go and to follow what God's called you to be and to know like that prompting won't go away when you have something and, and you have a prompting to write or to do create cre creativity in any way like art and you see others do it and there's this thing inside you go oh I really want to do that that's the Holy Spirit's invitation for you to go after that and don't let fear stop you don't let past experiences thwart you but go after that. And that's what Simon and I really want to help you guys. Like, let's let's get rid of those defeating mindsets, right, Rose? And let's Absolutely. get into who we are. Yes. 
refresh them, get them out of there, get more of God in there and watch. I mean, I'm, I, I, I say this all the time, watch what he will do because he's not just a passive God. He wants to partner with you in everything that you do, whatever creative expression, whatever. I mean, it could be just taking your trash out to the, to the curb. Like he yeah. wants this depth of intimacy with you because he's such a good father. And how many, like how many of us know how to give good gifts? This is his word, right? He says, how many of you mothers and fathers know how to give good gifts to your kids who ask, guess what? I'm the best papa. And you just, you just can ask me, you can ask me for the gifts and I give really good ones. And so we just get to, to revel in that and receive. (laughs) Yeah. And there's, there's something in closing guys, there is something about a new Renaissance where God wants his kids to play. He wants his kids to create. He, he doesn't want them to think about, okay, I'm a Christian. Now I'm all, I'm always serious. I'm always, you know, just learning teaching. No, that's not, I mean, that would be like my little three and six year old grandkids saying, okay, well, we're just going to be talking today. We're, we're not going to be playing. You're not going to be going into the pool. No, that, that's, we, we need to be more serious. They would go, I don't want to go to Mimi's house anymore. It's all serious. In the same way, the enemy has duped a lot of people into thinking, Rose, like God is just serious and he just cares about their spirituality. No, God cares about who you are and how you enjoy life and how you enjoy food or art or entertainment, all that stuff, because he created us to enjoy those things. And so I just wanted to release you guys out of that, that Gnostic thought that somehow uh, loving art or loving what you would love to do is, is not spiritual. No, that is spiritual. That's how God wired us to be. And we ask that you get back your, your DNA as a creative and that we could be a part of that. So Um, so I just want you to pray over people, Rose. I want you, because you have so much breakthrough in you. I want people to receive it right now. So if you need breakthrough to believe in yourself, you need breakthrough to like go after your dream, uh, to see Simon Bull online or in person myself, whatever it is that you have a heart for, put that dream up there right now. And Rose is going to pray for you. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, Teresa, we talk about God's word that says that the spirit of, of prophecy, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so when we share a testimony, there's a power of breakthrough in that testimony that gets released. We shared all of these testimonies with you, and that power of breakthrough has been released over you right now. So all of those things that you thought you were, you were contending with that held you back, God has broken them off. The blood of Jesus covers you. And guess what? That breaks off all of the bad stuff and makes a way, an invitation for you to step into the good stuff. All of the things that God has for you are available to you right now in Jesus name. And he's opening up your eyes, opening up your senses, your spiritual hearing, your spiritual sight. All of those things are being stirred up right now so you can get more of him. And so I release that over you. Let us know in Jesus name. Let us know in the comments. Tell us what God is doing because we know he's doing something. He's a God that's on the move and he is powerful. That's the God that we serve. Right, Teresa? (laughs) That's right. I love it. You guys, we're here for you. I mean, what she's talking, what Rose is talking about is guys, We've all been there. We've all let fear rule our life. Every single one of us have let um, dreams die or we haven't really fulfilled. But guess what? There's do-overs. There's do-overs in the heavenly realm. And God is saying, it's time to get your do-over and really take back who you truly are and discover that and see how doing it with God can change everything and doing it in community. So Thanks again for joining. Oh my gosh, Rose, love you so much. I I love you too. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, yes. Remember everybody, you are born to create.